Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents Podcast. And I'm being joined by Bradley, aka Sergeant. How you doing, man? I'm all right. Until I had to hear Chris's voice. <laughs> Speaking of Chris, we are also being joined by Chris. How are you doing? What's up? So uh, um, it's I'm pretty good. Good, good. So it's been about a week since our last podcast recording. Uh, I will say, just like anything, any new uh, venture in life, uh, it's going to have its growing pains. So didn't get necessarily as much viewership as we had hoped to, that it would have gotten last week, but we're going to build on that and uh, and move forward. We're going to keep pushing through. Um, and I think I have I have a bright future for this podcast. I think the three of us are really good. I, I, I listened to portions of our recording last week and i thought that uh our different personalities meld really well together um so anything new in your lives in the, within the last six or seven days well my kids started doing more dumb things oh really tell us about that <laughs> yeah like today my daughter was going my wife put my daughter down to go to bed mm -hmm. and she decided she didn't want to wear a diaper anymore and peed all over her bed and then proceeded to pee on the living room floor or the hallway floor Oh my goodness! Well, yeah. that's not fun. That my wife sounds was like not very happy. So, who's on the hook for the cleanup job for that? Is that is that kind of like a dad thing, or is mom um, taking care I'm of that? I'm probably going to have to shampoo the carpet. Ooh, man! Here's the thing: like, oh, I, it's carpet I, too. That sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck scrubbing that out. You're going to need some of that OxyClean or whatever it is that Billy Mays used to promote <laughs> on TV. <laughs> um, you know what they say about that dad stuff? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know what they say. Um, so I don't know, like growing up, like it seems like some kids were bed wetters and, and all that, according to my parents, and I know they're just not, they're not just pandering to me. According to my parents, I've never wet the bed. I mean, were you guys pretty good kids growing up as, as far as that goes or no? I mean, if I did it, I don't remember it. Well, but, I don't remember I mean, anything every, either. Every kid, did it. Tell me. every kid does it. What about you, Chris? Chris? You all are cutting up on me like shit. Oh, what are you talking about? We can we can hear you just fine. We we were just asking you, were you a, a bedwetter type kid or were you kind of like <laughs> uh wise beyond your well, ears? Occasionally, but not like crazy. Yeah. What do you mean were? <laughs> we talking about I was were? asking about the, I was asking about the present. Oh no 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 no! Oh, I know. No, <laughs> no I, I I can control my bladder. Oh, well, that's good to hear. I guess it's just the old men that have to worry about it. Yeah, you know, it's uh. I don't need a uh, Depends or a catheter or anything. You know, it's funny yes. how, how life has a, is a vicious circle. Um, one of my <laughs> buddies is a uh, is um working in the hospital, and he's telling me that uh, we were actually talking about this how how life comes full circle you come into this world uh unable to care for yourself wearing a diaper and many um not necessarily the way i would want to go but many unfortunately end up uh in the same state unable to take care of themselves in their late 90s or uh early 90s or maybe even 100 people are, are living longer nowadays uh, you know like i said wearing diapers unable to care for themselves I don't know. It's just uh, it's weird how life has that kind of comedic value to it. Is that you you end the same way you begin? Um, I don't know if you have you guys ever thought about that kind of thing. No, I'm gonna live forever. You're gonna live for yeah. Your spirit will live for, on forever because you're a legend. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of sucks when you have to sit in the corner and drool and piss on yourself though at the end of your life. You know. Yeah, and you know what? It comes down to a quality of life thing. When you're young. You think you're going to live forever. Um, but then it's like, do you really want to live into your late 90s, 100s? I mean, it's cool to say you did it, but if if the quality of life consists of you waking up to 20 to 30 pills you have to take every single morning and you don't have your motor functions, um, your, you know, uh, the proverbial light is on but nobody's home, you know, is that a a quality of life that is worth living. I mean, that's a serious question. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not all. I'm not about giving up, bro. So if, if it comes down to that, I got three kids to take care of me when I'm peeing myself and crapping all over myself. 
That's true. They're going to have to take I'm care of you. man. And the fact that they're all triplets, I mean, they're going to have to split that duty three ways. And I do mean <laughs> Split the duty. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, I don't know. Me personally, that's just, that's just me. I would rather have quality of life than um, triple yeah, digit exactly. years. That's just my thing, you know. And hopefully by then I've left a positive legacy for people. Uh, not just on YouTube, but because I don't think YouTube's going to last for yeah, the next the FBI. years. Chris, I'm not an FBI agent. Prove You've it. Gotta stop it. <laughs> prove it. Speaking you can't of, prove it. It's not real. Speaking of something, I'm, I'm going to be doing something really soon. Oh geez. Um, Here we go. And it's going to further kind of like pander to the theory that I'm an FBI agent. Um, within the next week or so. Um, my job has indirectly told me I need to shave. Oh. And I'm not happy about it. Uh, so I kind of looked into the handbook, and apparently it's only for this one-time gig that we're doing. Um, and uh, I, I will be able to maintain a mustache at, for, for at least a week. So, Ah, oh, an undercover sting. I get it. <laughs> see, see, this is what I'm talking about. I knew this was going to happen. I shouldn't have even talked about it. But anyway, that's that's what's What come. else could it be? It's an undercover sting. And <laughs> and you have to shave for some reason. I can't I, I can't even fathom the reason. Who Chris, <laughs> I have to wonder who is perpetuating this myth, this lie that I'm an FBI agent? where did this start? How did this begin? I'll give you three well, guesses. <laughs> well it's obvious based on A the impala you drive. So you can um, be. Excuse me, sir. Uh, I, I no longer drive a Chevy Impala. I traded that in. What's your second reason? B, the way you talk, and C, how defensive okay. you get. Wait, wait. About let's, it. let's break those down. The way I talk, what does that mean? How does an FBI well, agent talk? You're, you're in law enforcement. That's pretty obvious. <laughs> it, I mean, it's just obvious. You could be a security guard. And, and you're retweeting FBI tweets. You're 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 always linking and tagging people in them. And I have a right to like what FBI tweets. Same thing with the CIA. And it, it well, kinda... when when they're your employer, they are, they... okay. You know what, Chris? They are not my employer. Um, I actually, funny enough, um, I, I really wanted to bait people because. A lot of my viewership uh, tends to well, believe... Well, you did this week with your April Fool's uh, <laughs> job. Oh, that was hilarious. Okay, so here's the thing. I wanted to kind of play along this April Fool's. Uh, if you guys missed it, it was Monday, uh, April 1st. Um, and today we are uh, April 4th, so recording three days after the fact. But um, I really wanted to trigger some people on my timeline. Um, most of the people who follow me kind of are regulars on my streams so when they come through and they hear chris talking about me being an fbi agent or supposedly being an fbi agent they kind of play into that so Just i figured because i figured i'm gonna play into that too and i'm gonna do it on twitter on uh april fools so april fools morning i wake up and i'm like hey guys you've been asking for it it's coming i'm telling you later on today what it exactly i do for a living uh, and I kept tweeting at it. I kept replying to it throughout the day. Soon. Coming soon. It's happening. <laughs> and then finally at night, as I normally do, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, I always end every night with a good night, loved ones. Because you know what? Really, no matter what disagreements we may have uh, for friends, not friends, it doesn't matter. Because uh, God created you in his own image. And you are loved. We are, at the end of the day, all brothers and sisters. So that is a uh, a, a true statement and i stand by it. we you are loved so here's the thing at the end of the night i'm like i tweeted out a, a, a twitter video which was only about 30 seconds long and i pretty much in so many words told people it's really none of their business where i go to work um and chris i'm not going to blame you for this but i noticed lately that's more prevalent on my stream is people coming in pan you know like really bother me almost just asking me constantly what exactly i do for a living no um, they did that before i even started the fbi thing like i said I'm, the point. I'm not i'm not putting the blame on you but it's just they, really they did that all the time 
yeah i'm not putting the blame on you i'm just saying it's an annoying trend and i i think as a streamer i i am your friend obviously but as a streamer um i think i have a reasonable right to privacy that's just my opinion um but anyway i triggered a lot of people about that some people even unfollowed me did you really? guys yeah yeah that doesn't so, seem like an unfollow events well some people are in it just for the expose um <laughs> you know and once they find out they're not going to get that from me they, they kind of move on but anyway like i said monday was april fools were you guys not necessarily tricked by anything but did you see anything kind of questionable on monday where you're like you have to do a double take in other words Not really. Uh, not really. No. No, I mean there was a there was a troll thing that was supposed to be a leak from um, Gunfire Games about uh, the sequel to Dark Souls, the next sequel to Dark Souls. That was obviously wrong because they <laughs> they misspelled the character's name for one. <laughs> okay. It's like it's pretty obvious right there. It's it's not a real thing. But, I mean, then there was another thing about um, somebody coming out of retirement for the NFL. And I was like, no, it's not going to happen. It what was like you, Chris? No, not really anything at all, to Nothing. be honest. I will have to admit, I did a double take on something that I think it was Amazon that tweeted. It was a Twitter video, um, and it was about a minute long, maybe a minute 30. It kind of showed this giant Amazon blimp flying over, I think it was the uh, one of the islands of Hawaii. And uh, from underneath it were these really tiny drones that were uh, individually flown by drone operators. And they each contained packages. You can see them dropping off packages from like 150 feet in the air. I'm like, hold on a second. This, there's no way this gets through the FAA regulations. And uh, sure enough... It was fake, but I definitely had to do a double take because it was so well edited and it really looked realistic. I mean, the CGI was amazing, um, but that totally got me. And you know FAA regulations from your position, but anyway. <laughs> <Isn't it Chris? laughs> your time in the FBI has been well spent, sir. Here's the thing. I mean, it's not uh, it's not outlandish to think. I mean, do you guys see us being very far from... Going from Amazon two-day delivery to Amazon drone delivery? No, they didn't. Aren't they? No, aren't they supposed to be like trying that somewhere? Uh, I think they te they tried testing it out in like I think Florida or California, and um, I'm, the FAA is just not going for it. I mean, now they have driverless cars, but yeah, I, um, I, I see I them in Vegas all the time. That's a big thing too, right? The truckers might. Like autonomic drive uh, vehicles my thing is is if you have an automatic driving car there needs to be a human override because That's what you're supposed to be because if if some idiot darts out in front of you in a jaywalking and it slams the brakes on because the motion detector it's not taking into account that the guy behind you may not be able to stop without rear-ending you yeah, I, I agree with you, Chris. I mean, I, as much as I love technology, um, there has to be some kind of room for error for anything. And I think that a, a human override would be a great. I mean, even if it's something as little as, you know, no steering wheel, but li living the, uh, the driver, if you will, have a brake pedal at the very least. You know, so you can slam on the brakes. Oh, just if... give me the full thing, and I'll sit there. And if I need to take over, I'll take over. Yeah, there you go. Right. Or you could do what Tesla does, which I believe I don't like. I said I don't own a Tesla, but I'm pretty sure Tesla makes you touch the steering wheel like once every thirty seconds, even when it's on autopilot, just to make sure you're like still awake. A Tesla drives itself. Tesla drives itself. Yeah, I mean, uh, it'll speed up. It'll switch lanes. Um, it'll cut people off. You can set it to how aggressive you want it to be. Um, you can set the car I, length distance, like the following it's distance. funny, you know the module in there? I saw a YouTube video where a cop pulled somebody over and was telling them that they couldn't have a computer like that. <laughs> Not knowing that car. was the actual console? <laughs> and he didn't know it was the console for the Tesla. Yeah, man. I mean, 
that's such a cool car. I mean, it's it's unfortunate that it's been taken over by hipsters. Um, it's pretty much really only who drives that car right now. Uh, no it's offense, to, no offense to Joe they're, Rogan. They are all, all electric, over the place. They? They're all electric. Um, that's my problem is is I can't drive far in it. No, you can drive plenty, dude. There's people who pull off uh, a trip. Yeah, from but like, I don't want to have to pull off and sit there for a half hour to charge my car. Oh, uh, it's a lot more than half oh hour. I think God. even I think even the speed charger at going from empty to uh, full is easily uh, two to four hours. It, it's so no I mean, ha- it's no half an hour. Get- if you got to recharge, you find a restaurant that has a charge port, and then you go and eat while you're charging your car. By the time you're done, you can go back out and drive for another six or seven hours. And here's the thing. That, well, that center true. console that now, things got I, I'll tell you actually... what my problem is. is the, the mall in my town, I'm in the outskirts of D.C., has oh, like very limited park. They have a lot of parking, but it's always packed. Well, now they put in like... Two to four dozen Tesla stations. I mean, there's not that many Teslas out there. They're expensive cars. So there's like 30 to 40 parking spaces that normal people can't park in for these stupid Teslas that you see one in when you're there. Now, let me ask you this. Are they like proprietary Tesla only chargers or are they for electric vehicles? No, they're just for electric vehicles. I guarantee it. It's the same thing we have at work. Well, Chris is saying they're for Tesla. These have the Tesla like logo. It's a whole like Tesla. It might be be a Tesla brand charger, but it's it'll still work in like any electric car. No, I don't think so because um, every electric vehicle has their own like uh, connector, so it'll only work for that type of vehicle. To me, that's weird because we have them at work, and I see. Different cars plugged into different stations all the time, and there's Teslas, there's the uh, Nissans, the Toyotas. Hmm. I was thinking it's kind of like Apple, where you have to have the Apple charging thing for your phone, and like you know, most Androids are compatible with the USB B or C, whatever the hell it is now. But yeah, you know, I, I was thinking USB-C. similar to that. But here's the thing with those cars, right? As cool as they are, they're super, um, you know, futuristic. Um, how much, or not, rather not how much, but how long would you have to drive a Tesla before it starts paying for itself? Meaning all the money you're saving from not stopping at a gas station. How long would you drive a Tesla for it to start paying for itself? I mean, you look at the Model S, the top of the line Tesla that's out there right now. It's a hundred and about fifteen thousand dollars. Is that the cheapest? No, that's their most expensive one, and it's a top of the line one. It's the Model S, I believe it's called. Well, what's their cheapest one? You oh, you can I mean you can check Craigslist in your local area. Teslas are selling for um, thirty to fifty thousand dollars right now. So. But yeah, but here's the that's thing. still I mean, a lot of money for. It, a... That's what I'm saying. It's a lot of money. So, like, how long would you have to own one for you to say, okay, I am now starting to make money on this vehicle? Well, my problem would be is I'm losing money because I have to sit there for. If I want to take a six hour road trip, I'm probably having to stop. Or, you know, well, I mean, six hours. I mean, yeah, how much? How much does a? How much would like a new? I don't know what are you, Chevy's not making cars anymore, but a new Impala, a new Impala LT. How much would that cost? Let me see. It's like it's like twenty grand, right? Chevy Impala. Um, so it's selling. The current MSRP is twenty eight thousand. Yeah. So you figure you go probably a year. You make a couple. You make a couple grand because it costs about forty dollars to fill up your tank in an Impala. If, Gas is around two seventy a gallon. Right, and most Americans uh, are filling up their tank once a week at this point. So if you if you go a, if you go a year, then it pays for itself in two years. Okay, so you're saying two years. years? It depends. If you get like the lowest model Tesla, it's like thirty some odd grand. Yeah, but if I mean, my thing is like, if you're gonna go big. Go for the, like the best because the, the really nice thing about the Model S 
is that you don't necessarily always have to have it charged or plugged in because it's got an active charge system, meaning that uh, while you're driving, it actually is charging and it charges better if there's actually uh, available sunlight. So you're actually charging the vehicle as you're driving, which is really cool. Oh, it's kind of um, like having a juice pack on your phone type thing. Pretty much. I mean, I've never had a juice pack on my phone. Is that kind of the same kind of ID? Well, I, I bought one and I tell you, I love it. What, what exactly does that do for you? So like if let's just say you, you have, you have to work and then you're going like, then you're going to a concert, let's say, mm -hmm. and you forgot your charger at home. So you can't, so you use your phone some at work. So let's just say you're down to, and you're, it's kind of an old phone. So it's down to like 50%. You know, you got to use the GPS to pick your friends up, go to the concert, blah, 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 blah. Well, but you turn on your juice pack and it starts charging the phone. It plugs into the charger port and it starts charging your phone. So you get it up to a reasonable percentage and you can turn it off. And turn it back on okay. when you need it again. I see what you're saying. Yeah, but, you but know, then you have to carry around an extra your, thing. If yeah, not getting it's... back from the concert, you know, you, to drop your friends off, you know, your phone's down five, ten percent, and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to make it back. I mean, to yeah, their place, I, I their get the idea. Be able to give me good direction. You know what I mean? I get the idea because you're carrying around essentially a, another battery pack with you. But like Sarge says, it's another thing you have to remember to bring, you know. No, mine. Yeah. My, I use mine as my case. Oh, do you? Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Oh, no, mine's not. Yeah. I, I yeah. couldn't even tell you where mine is, and it can't, I got it when I got my phone. See, mine is basically <laughs> my case. And, like, I've dropped this phone on, like, asphalt and, like, sidewalk or whatever. And it's it's pretty good juice pack. It's called Mophie. So I that. really recommend them, and I'm obviously not sponsored by them, but I recommend them. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm looking at my calendar here. I don't know why I got this alert, because I've already done it, but um, it's telling me tax day. I mean, don't without mentioning any figures, just this year for taxes, um, do you guys think you're going to get money, or are you having to pay this year? I, I already got, got money. I got money. You already did yours and got your money. <laughs> I did too. Yep. Isn't it funny? Um, when you know you're going to get money back, you do it right away. But then when you know yeah. you have to pay money, you wait for the last possible second to file. Uh, this year, I'm actually getting money back too. Um, so I don't. I don't think I've ever had to pay. You've never had. To I pay? don't think I have either. No. I've never had to well, pay either, but. Um, it's a thing that happens. Well, you will if you're a new promotion in your government hey, Chris, salary. You gotta stop. <laughs> the FBI is gonna charge you for all the stuff they can get out of you. Oh my goodness, you guys are the worst. And then, then if you wreck one in the government cars, ooh, that's gonna be ugly. Ooh, yeah, that comes right out of your paycheck, bro. <laughs> you guys are such trolls. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, gaming news, real quick. Um, I will say too that I'm I'm getting kind of bored with Madden. Uh, Mole stopped by the stream last time, and he asked a genuine genuine question like, "Why do you think people are not playing Madden as much?" And I said, "I have no idea." And it's a fair it's... point. I I really have no idea why I don't like the game. It just got really boring to me. But I continue to stream it because that's the only thing that garners any views nowadays. Um, but on the topic of video games, I'm sure you've heard but uh and i i really don't care about the royal family i i never watched the weddings or anything like that but when something is said about video games i kind of pay attention uh prince harry today said that he believes that fortnite should be banned everywhere i mean um, why it's, it's a terrible saying when he's not playing it anyway but qu quoted saying that it it's created to addict um, and that it's the reason that kids are no longer going out and living life and they're just staying home. Uh, what I, do you thought that was the, that? I thought that was just the internet's fault. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Well, the internet gets blamed for a lot of things. Sued, I mean, I think years ago I read somewhere where a woman sued McDonald's because her kids pressured her to get a happy meal and she had a hard time saying no. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, just, it's that same stupid slope. Like, parents need to set limits and boundaries or whatever. But to say that's up to them. And you know what? If you're an adult, you can do whatever the hell you want because you're an adult and you can do whatever the hell you want. You've earned it. That reminds me of uh, another McDonald's lawsuit where I actually think it was another lady who sued McDonald's for making her fat. It's like, <laughs> well, wait a second. Woman burned herself from spilling coffee on because they didn't have a warning on the cup that it was hot. Making her fat. Yeah, but the spilling coffee thing, that's uh, borderline accidental. As far as making you fat, I mean, that's a willing decision you made to, to drive to that drive through and order a meal for three and eat it all yourself. You know, that's that's a willful... Well, loving yourself to one Big Mac instead of three, and you might be okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You know what? Limitations on yourself, that's all. Everything in moderation. Well, not everything. Most things. I won't say well, try heroin in moderation, because that's something you should never do. Maybe you but... should do what the uh, lady I ran into a... a, a mcdonald's one time came in and ordered a big mac with no meat <laughs> hmm. i've heard of such like, phenomenon but i have not seen like it myself a salad with bread <laughs> yeah i don't, I don't quite salad know. with uh mustard and bread yeah and warm <laughs> salad yeah i don't i don't quite understand that at that point you know what is the whole point of getting a sandwich anyway um, right uh burger king is uh, testing out a new patty, which is lab grown. Um, it's supposed to be vegan friendly. It's made 100% in a lab. Uh, it tastes 100% like real beef. Uh, people have done blind studies and they really cannot tell the difference um, between this synthetic lab manufactured meat and uh, the regular flame broiled burger meat that uh, Burger King normally uses. I, I am not personally a vegan, and I'm definitely not a vegetarian. Do you guys think that this is the new wave um, as far as uh, vegans and trying to uh, lessen the the kind of effect that we have on livestock, or no? Well, if AOC has her way, because she's worried about cow farts polluting our air and <laughs> having a country in 12 She should years. go to a Jets game. Okay, well, you mentioned AOC. Let's talk about someone rational. Uh, but, is there anybody in politics that's actually would be rational? Is what what cancer am I going to get from the lab made? Uh, uh, so that's the thing, right? It's kind of scary. You know that uh, they're going to feel good eating it because they're not. It's not an animal being killed for it. But at the same time, like exactly that, we don't know much about it. And um, people are wholesale buying buying into this whole idea. And uh, I feel like they, they are not 100% educated on what exactly it is, number one. And number two, uh, what kind of health consequences it may have on them. You know, is that something that you'd even want to try as a meat eater? I don't think any of us are vegetarians. I think we all like, you know, to eat animals because they're tasty. I'm a man. I eat meat. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if it's if it if it's safe and not like, I I, I would want to know what it's made from, and you know, because now everything has side effects and everything causes cancer, and you know, they haven't been able to. Uh, come up with a better treatment than radiation for the last 40, 50 years, so... Right. Or, well, you know, so I don't want to die because I decided not to eat animal meat, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, there's other ways to get protein, I get that, but it's... it's I don't know, man. I like meat, <laughs> so I'll eat it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean... I, I don't want to. I don't want to eat fake burger. That's that's like when the the thing came out about. I think it was McDonald's or Taco Bell or something where they were using horse meat instead of actual burger meat. Wait, was that a real thing or is that kind of like? Yeah, a that was a real thing. That they, they actually that ended up being like at one point. The Swedish meatballs. Wait, what about IKEA Swedish meatballs? They used horse meat. Get out of here. No, I'm pretty sure. 
Bro, I I now have no reason to go to IKEA anymore. That's really the only reason I ever gone. <laughs> and you know what's funny? IKEA is one of those like weird places that where you go, and no matter where you go, it's always the same. Kind of like Home Depot. You go in, you know you're gonna hear country music. You know it's gonna be super dusty. <laughs> you know the bathroom's gonna be all the way in the back towards the northeast corner. <laughs> I think the same thing is, is is true with Ikea. Every time I go in there, it's always a guy and a girl, a couple arguing over like lampshades and window covers. They're always arguing about something. He's and a profiler, I, ladies and I'm not a profiler. <laughs> I just notice trends. That's all. That is that is all. Oh, man. You should be on NCIS or something. What was that? What was that show on TV that was uh, about the FBI profilers? I uh, don't know. Chris apparently watches all that junk, <laughs> and from time to time he'll Criminal tweet Minds. That was the one. Criminal Minds. He he definitely watches that show. And here's the thing. Here's the thing that trips me out about Chris. He'll watch something like a Criminal Minds, for instance, <laughs> and he'll tweet me a four or five minute video and be like, "Is this realistic?" I'd be like, "What are you talking about? How do I even know?" No, I didn't say that. I said I I told you how I thought it was stupid and then you, you laughed and I said, What's so funny? And you said, How unrealistic it is. And I said, Well, how realistic is this in your opinion? And then you said somewhat. That's the conversation, not I don't go, Oh, tell me Bro. this is realistic every five minutes. Bro, you're out here kind of like exposing my DMs. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the golden rule, bro? You just exposed mine. I hate you so much. <laughs> I cannot stand you, Chris. You're so intolerable. <laughs> <laughs> if this if this podcast oh, ever this would be so much better if I could stop laughing. <laughs> bro, if this podcast ever takes off, I I fully intend on flying both of you guys out here. Sorry, Sarge, you're going to have to tell the wife to watch the three kids for a while. <laughs> I'm totally flying you guys out to Vegas. Number one, I'd like to punch Chris directly in the face. But number two... Uh, Won't happen. <laughs> we're, we're throwing elbows, man. If you come out here to Vegas, we're throwing elbows. But um, I'd like to, I'd like to for real, like sit down with you guys and maybe do like a live podcast for one episode. That'd be really cool. Um, just a one live episode, maybe with the face cam and everything. Um, but eventually, you know, that I'm looking way down the line. Um, right now we haven't made any money, which by the way, if you guys do decide to donate, any donations are split up three ways between Chris, uh, Sarge and I. So, um, help us out, uh, if you can, if you have the means to do so. Um, also, you can also help us out with just, uh, supporting us via subscription. So, uh, Sarge is on his way to getting his channel monetized. He's not quite there. YouTube has set some really strict guidelines for what channels can and can't be monetized. Um, he's getting there. He's getting there. The link to his channel is down below. Uh, Chris, for the time being, does not have a uh, YouTube channel, but does have a Twitter. Uh, that is also down below, as well as my Twitter and YouTube. So, um any kind of support you can give us would be great. Uh, I'm sure you can understand starting a new endeavor like this. Uh, like I said in the beginning, does have its growing pains, but th these guys are some really great guys. And what you're hearing is really what you're going to get from them. Um, they, they're they two of the most genuine guys I've ever known on the internet. And I've been on the internet for a really long time. Um, they'll tell it to you straight. You know, Chris is a little bit of a conspiracy theorist. He believes a lot of the things this little voice in his mind tells him. Wrong. But yes, you do. Basically, he's basically the cheap version of Alex Jones. He is. He really is. <laughs> and and Sarge is kind of like our voice of reasoning. Um, oh, geez, we're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I'm not saying you're the uh, the measuring stick of of what we consider right or wrong, <laughs> but you're kind of our voice of reasoning here. Um, so, but it's, I, I really like the way, uh, our, our personalities kind of mesh. Uh, Chris, for instance, does not have one at all. So I'm just kidding. I'm just Stronger kidding, Chris. Your I'm I'll just kidding. 
I'm just to kidding. get away from all this mushiness, bro. You know what doesn't mesh? What? Apparently, Disney and the actress that plays uh, Miss Marvel. Disney and Miss Marvel. On? Yeah, the uh, I saw this thing today. I think it's like a week old. Um, apparently, Disney's trying to distance themselves from Miss Marvel as much as possible because they kind of got outed by somebody in Disney. No, I'm not. I'm not saying any of this is really true. I'm just saying this is what I heard. What way? And you're talking about the movie that's um, out in theaters right now. Yeah, apparently somebody, somebody, some executive, anonymously leaked that Disney bought a bunch of the their own tickets to the Miss Marvel movie to boost the numbers. Wow. Because that movie was going to fail miserably, and they Dude, didn't want it to. That is so scummy when they do that. Um, what's the other movie uh, that rates? Sorry, what's the website, the most popular website out there right now that rates movies? Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes. Didn't they get yeah. caught taking money yeah, from that, producers to give positive ratings? Yeah, that was that was part of the thing. Like, apparently, Disney did that with this. Like, how is that fair at all? It's not. That's why. That's why they. Uh, it's when I guess there's a black mark on Fandango because they technically own Rotten Tomatoes. That's really sad. And I've, you know, the same thing happens in the gaming culture too. I've heard uh, IGN has received the money or has taken money from game developers to promote their games. Well, you know, it does. It has to. It has well, to. It's so the sad. actress's name is uh, Brie Larson. Mm -hmm. And she made a pretty stupid comment in February. What'd she say? About a year ago. Larson explains in an interview, I started paying attention to what my press days looked like in the critics reviewing movies and noticed it appeared to be overwhelmingly white male. Yeah. So, hmm. get rid of her, Disney. She's one of those. Apparently, they're reshooting a bunch of, they reshot a bunch of the new Avengers movie to kind of get her out of it as much as possible. My thing is like, Man, these movies have changed so much since I've grown up. Like, I've always been to Marvel versus DC, and it was so good during my time because it was never politicized. Um, nowadays, everything has to be politicized. You know, look wait at the a wait, 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 wait. You say Marvel was never political? It wasn't as political as what we're seeing today. Like, okay, for for instance, Captain America the, was solely a political move. Listen. This Captain Marvel is pushing the whole, like, uh, empowered women. I'm not saying it's bad for women to be empowered, but it's like, it's saying, hey, girls can be, girls can be everything that guys can be too, um, which may or may not be true. I don't know where you stand on that, but that's just what it is. And then the whole Black Panther thing, I don't know if you guys oh, saw that man. movie, but um, it was kind of like uh, a shot at the white people from what I can see on the, the backlash I've seen on Twitter. Again, I have not seen that movie, but it absolutely was. The whole thing was set up as black people are, are held down and it, like they alluded to how bad black people have it in America, which. So you have seen the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Is I saw the, the movie. I, I kind of uh, streamed it. Is that the, okay, is that the narrative of that movie? Because I haven't seen it. Oh, that was that was the whole thing behind what's his name, the the war monger guy. Yeah, his whole character. That's that's what he was mad about because Wakanda wasn't doing enough to help the black people around the world, and they were treated so bad everywhere else, and this and that. And just... see, that's the thing. I, I mean. Yeah, Every you time might I'm... disagree that these movies, these children movies, used to be uh, politicized, but not to the to the level that it is today. I mean, what no, what is what is that. your backup on that? Why, why would you say previous movies were overly politicized like this? I didn't say movies. I was talking about Captain America. Captain, okay, America, Captain America was he was created to boost the uh, the opinion of the American people in the war effort in World War Two. His first issue, he's fighting Hitler. I'm not saying I'm not saying anything bad about Captain America and the whole, you know, trying to boost morale for the for the war that was going on. But it's you gotta admit, man, that was that's a huge political move. 
to try to influence people through a comic book. And that's the thing. Like, I, that I that was like... the whole thing he was built up on was was trying to influence people to uh, sympathize for the war effort. I feel like you're not really catering to your uh, viewer base, though, when you politicize stuff like this. Um, I know that people have said that, uh, and I don't know if it's true, but they're talking about like the original Disney movies were so politicized that they were Nazi in nature. Um, and there's actually like YouTube videos where you can pull up where Walt Disney himself greenlit some cartoons that went out that were legitimately um, Nazi, you know, showing the uh, the swastika and all that stuff. So, oh, yeah. I, and I never knew that. I just recently discovered that, that Disney did that. So, um, but look at how far it's come now. Like, they went from that to... Full circle. Well, not full circle, but now they're, you know, ESPN, a, a 24-hour <laughs> channel, you know. Now, I'm not even kidding. They, If you didn't know this already, um, ESPN is from Disney. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah. They own ESPN, and now they own Fox, right? They just don't own Fox Sports. Wait, That's Disney the part of Fox? I didn't get. Disney owns Fox. Yeah, really. Yeah, they just bought it for like seventy-two billion dollars. Wow, I had no idea. Well, they are yeah, certainly man. changing times. Wow, so that's. Now uh... we'll have all liberal news. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Honestly, the news has been so. Your news now. And here's the thing: everyone who knows me knows I'm I'm a huge Donald Trump supporter, um, and I actually genuinely do believe that regardless of who runs next year, he's going to win again, or at least that's my hope. But here's the thing: ever since Donald Trump announced that he was going to run for presidency, I have not been able to watch the news. Because oh, no. you you he turn can't. on you turn on Fox and here's this here it is all right you turn on Fox and they're like oh my goodness Donald Trump may actually be the savior that the Bible talks about you turn on CNN and they're like orange mad bad orange man evil and it's like Jesus they're so direct opposite it, it's so polarizing I feel like. If if both media sources, or you know, not just Fox and CNN, but like MSNBC, every news channel you can think of, if everyone could take ten to fifteen steps towards the center, we're gonna get back to having real news again. You know, we talk about make America great again. How about let's make news great again? Who's been able to actually turn on a TV and enjoy news? You know, I, I mean, get, I don't watch I don't watch the news since I moved down here, bro, so I can't I get really say all anything. my news from either my Twitter feed. If someone retweets it, if it's a major incident or something going on nationwide, or if it's um, if it's on my Instagram feed, which God knows how often I check, how rarely I check my Instagram feed. So it sucks. It really sucks. News isn't what it used to be, and I'm not going to blame Donald Trump for it because, you know, it's not his fault. It's it's the direction the media is going, and I, and I don't like it, you know. Um, I mean, I agree with you. <laughs> Every time... Like I follow I follow Trump on Twitter. And I do too. That that dude could throw up the sky is blue today, and there would be a million retwe- million comments on that quote, <laughs> telling him how big of a Nazi he is because he thinks the sky is blue. You know what trips like, me out about serious? Donald Trump's Twitter is he like you said he can tweet out anything like the sky is blue, and there's instantly hundreds of thousands of of uh, replies. And they're all blue check marks. They're all like <laughs> verified accounts. Like, how is YouTube not catching these people and banning them for real? You're not allowed to have um, auto tweeting bots. Like, legitimately, these accounts detect every time. There's no way they respond that quickly with as much writing. I mean, there's a paragraph oh. in writing 13 seconds after Donald Trump tweets. It's very clearly a bot that auto responds or auto replies oh, every yeah. time every time he tweets. It's it's annoying. And they're all verified accounts with maybe three thousand followers, which I don't understand how that works. It's okay. It's, Nobody understands how the how how that works. It's it's all I don't liberal. know, man. It it seems oh. like a whole bunch of crap, honestly. It is. 
It really is. But um, like, the the whole the whole social media thing is just a giant crapshoot itself. You can't you can't win on social media. There's no winning in social nope. media. Just ask Chris. I mean, Chris, you've been banned how many times on Twitter now? Twice. See. <laughs> And I've, I've seen some of the stuff on Chris's feed. If you, By the way, if you're not following Chris, do it. He's got some really interesting stuff he tweets on there. Like I said, he like Sargent said, he is the um, spirit animal. He's the Alex Jones <laughs> spirit animal. Uh, <laughs> They're making the frogs gay. <laughs> so, I mean, there's I'm a lot of... I bleed you, red. I eat you, meat. You can, you can read some of... Uh, Chris's recent tweets and be like, "Yep, this guy's a conspiracy theorist, but he's he's a genuinely a good guy, though." Um, you would not be wrong. You would not be wrong. Nope. <laughs> he's got a little Tweety Bird in his brain that tells him something, and he runs to the bank with it every time. Wrong. <laughs> wrong. Anyway, that's going to do it for uh, this week's podcast. I want to say thanks to Sarge and Chris uh, for making it what it is. And yeah, um, their links again are down below. Uh, we will see you next week, which uh, will be probably uh, recorded on April 11th because Thursday nights seem to be our best nights for recording. Previously, our first podcast was recorded on a weeknight for me, and with four hours of sleep, I could not do it. So, uh, shout out to Sarge and Chris for uh, willing to work with me, the both of them, to uh, come to a a resolution for uh, the best time to stream, which is unfortunately for Sergeant Chris <laughs> past midnight East coast time. And it is uh, uh, 9 PM my time. So with that being said, thank you guys for coming through. Appreciate you week three uh, or our third podcast, rather not week three, our third podcast coming next week, right around the same time. Thanks for all the support. See you next time. Yeah, bro. See you.